I have to say you've changed my mind on this. Um, so it, now it's my turn to have my mind changed by you. Uh, I, I've always, especially with COVID, I've always been a pro-choice person. Uh, before COVID, I'm, I'm more liberal on that. I'm a pro-choice person. With COVID, I was still pro-choice. I felt like people should choose whether or not they wanted to take these vaccines, not be forced into right. them. When it came to the trans issue, I've always been also pro-choice on that. I've just thought, well, I don't think the law should get involved until I don't want my reasoning was I don't and it's a consistent line of reasoning, but I'll tell you why you changed my mind on this, because um, the consistent line of reasoning is I don't want the government controlling doctors or me. Mm -hmm. I, that needs to be between me and my doctor. And I don't want the govern government stepping in and telling me I have to vaccinate my kids, for example. Right. And I don't want the government coming in and telling me I can't do, you know, I, that mm -hmm. I can't do certain things for my children or that I, I just don't want government involvement. And I think that we have to use education. Uh, we have to push back on this movement. I have no problem in saying this is ridiculous. Boys are boys, girls are girls. Um, right. and, and that is a societal cultural shift we have to push for so that people mm -hmm. stop this behavior. Um, so I've always been like more education is better than silencing, censoring, or halting or, or making right. something illegal. You've changed my mind because you've brought up and, and I've now I've been more uh, lately since I've seen it be more of a trend. And I've seen even my own friends in my own circle dealing with mm -hmm. this where, you know, the other parent says they're, you know, they're divorced. It's a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing it. It's not just a random news story you read anymore. It's like really happening in so many of mm -hmm. our lives. We know people that are literally going through this and it's really shocking how pervasive it is. So yeah. that's that's made me struggle with, gosh, you know, if it's this, it's not like a, a, a rare thing anymore. Like this is a, a thing really kind of, so maybe there should be some. So I, I, I've kind of struggled with it recently on whether or not it should be illegal. But I'll tell you, your argument that you have the right to procreate and your parents do not have the right to take your eyesight from you. They do not have the right to take your hearing from you or your vocal cords from you, and they shouldn't have the right either to take your reproductive ability from you mm -hmm. as well. That that is your right, and then you can make that decision when you're an adult. That's you right. can decide if you wanna do that. I would hope doctors don't blind people uh, for this because right. the person comes to them and says, I feel like a blind person, so blind me. I would hope doctors would have the sense to stop that sort of practice just like i would hope that they would stop doing these transitionings um but that is a that's a very convincing argument and now i think i'm against i i, I agree we have to make this illegal you cannot go and sterilize your child and that is what these puberty blockers you know even that's, that's right. like the isn't that the and i think that's the most benign of the the big, that's like that's like the first step, right? They start with the puberty blockers before they go into yes. all of these, like pumping you full of other hormones and and trying yes. to, right? But even, so even puberty blockers, you you should not have the right to halt your child from going through puberty, a very that's natural right. process, unless it's puberty is a human right for some reason. Puberty is yeah, a human puberty right. is a human it's right because uh, the, the the truth is they'll tell you that um, puberty blockers are reversible. But, but they're actually not. And there's tremendously uh, voluminous, just voluminous longitudinal data on this from Finland because they've been, they were doing puberty blockers for over 20 years. And the fact is, if you don't go through puberty at the time that your body decides to go through it, it never does it again. Ugh. So when you block puberty, puberty blockers were created to block puberty for like three months or four months for something called precocious puberty, where uh, a child enters puberty too early and there can actually be some physical disorders from it, particularly mm -hmm. for females. Mm -hmm. So they do block it for a short period of time. It, it's completely experimental and untested, doing it for long periods of time, like 10 years. Um, and Finland has found, uh, you know, 21 year olds getting lethal osteoporosis. When I say lethal, I mean, the cervical bones are crushing and destroying the nerves that control the heart. Like osteoporosis, that's, that's bad. The skeleton doesn't develop normally. There's all kinds of problems with puberty blockers um, beyond just the idea that you don't go through the normal 
puberty. But we should think of puberty as a human right. It's it's how you become yeah. uh, capable of procreating and how you come to grips with being a male or female in your society. Yeah, it should absolutely be outlawed. You make such a great uh, a great argument on that that it, it I can't believe this state is is allowing your ex-wife to harm your children like this. Um, so what is the status now? When was the last time you saw your kids? It's been almost three years. Um, they Why put me has on it supervised been so long? They put me on supervised visitation and uh, the court chose a supervisor that refuses to allow me to visit my son when he's not in a dress. I can't change him out of a dress for the visits. And he's very embarrassed to be in front of his father in a dress. Um, they, they won't let me pray with my son and lots of other things. So I can't, I've just made a decision that I'm not going to do anything to hurt my son. So I can't, uh, participate in that. And so I haven't been able to use those, um, supervised visits. They have to occur within LA County. So for a long time, I had to travel to LA to even do them. I did two, two of them. Um, and, um, then when I moved to California, the supervisors were just becoming really um, strenuously saying like I had to affirm James as a girl and I won't do that. So you had to call him by the new name, whatever she's calling him by, you had to call him, yes. uh, use the new pronouns, she, right. her, that type of stuff. Yeah. And so they, they're they saying that you're the bad one because you won't do yeah. those things. And so right. they're limiting your access to your children. That's right. Oh, and gosh. it's it's a common thing. Um, and we don't have time to talk about it, but um, there there are grant programs that the federal government gives out in family court. Title IV D is the largest one, um, which incentivizes fathers to get less than half the time with their kids. But there's one. The grants come out every October and they bypass the state government and go straight to the counties. Um, and they get about 40, 30 to $40,000 per father that they put on supervised visitation. And so you see in July and August, they just put tens of thousands of fathers on a supervised visitation to get the grants. And I was, oh, I was put on in August and I was one of those fathers in Dallas County. And this is something that, so at the schools, like when you you said in your, you did a video uh, explaining this, what had happened. And one of the things you you said is that the schools were complicit in this. Like he, your son mm -hmm. would show up to school and they would, in, in boy clothes, like you would have him in boy clothes and then they would change him at the school into a dress. Like, was that your ex-wife was in on that? She was, or was that just the yeah, school definitely. operating on its own? She was, yeah, she was definitely. directing them and to do that. This, this is something that I think is really important for parents to know, because I did not know this until this happened to me. I was like, how can it possibly be legal for them to do this and not tell me about it? Right. So it turns out in all 50 states, both psychologists, psychiatrists, and doctors, so anybody in the psychology community and doctors, um, can exert a right of privacy for your child against you. And they don't have to tell you that they've exerted this right of privacy. And this is intended, I think, to prevent, you know, if a child confesses to abuse or something, you don't tell the abusive parent so that it could right. have repercussions for the child. But what it's been used for in the transgender cases is the school psychologist will begin, uh, you know, affirming a child, an affirming course of treatment without informing the parent. And that's perfectly legal in all 50 states. I think it's really important for parents to know that and to know that you should never allow your child to be alone with a psychologist or a doctor. It's very common in well checks for children now. The doctor will ask the parent to step out of the room so they conduct a private examination. You should refuse to do that because you don't know what the doctor is going to do. And there's been cases here in Texas where doctors have begun to transition kids in well checks, pediatrician well checks, without telling the parent. And then this gets used against the, the, the parent in family court, because now you have a medical professional who said for years, I've been transitioning this child, and this parent won't go along with it. What can we do? I mean, 
what what can we do? What do you think we can do? I mean, I know this is it's like a it's like if you knew the answer, you would have done it so that you would have your kids, yes. you know, and and yes. and this wouldn't be happening to your son. Is your yes. ex wife? Do you know? Are you are you being informed at all anymore of your son's condition and what she plans to do and if she plans to go through puberty blockers and oh, she she fully intends to go through with puberty blockers uh, immediately. Um, the, the, the suit that she's filed against me in California is a suit to chemically castrate my son. I mean, that's what the suit is. She wants, she has, she's under an injunction to not do these procedures and she wants to remove the injunction in order to do them. And that's what she's asked the court for. So we're definitely, that's what we're arguing about in terms of what to do. You know, um, I think we have to think seriously about whether we can participate in institutions that have done this to children. Um, mm -hmm. I have uh, begun drafting bills for Texas um, to remove the professional designation from psychology. I don't think that they should be a designated profession in the States anymore. And they're, they're a horrible profession. If you look at what they, in the 1960s, they were lobotomizing perfectly healthy, well-adjusted women. People don't know that, that they were just giving women that were, uh, spirited, spirited, and were you know sassy to their husbands. They would put them on a table, put a needle into their brain, and lobotomize them. They damaged their brain intentionally, and they did this to millions of women in the 1960s. In the 1970s, they were given electroshock to obstreperous black children in public schools. They would literally torture them with electroshock, giving them brain damage. In the 1990s, we had the fake memory BS, which sent you know, hundreds of innocent people to prison on expert testimony that we found was completely faked in the scientific literature. <coughs> so I think we need to remove their professional designation. For psychology, for, for, for psychiatry, psychology. is that what you're, psychology. Just yeah, psychology. Yeah. Uh -huh. There is um, a statistically and scientifically valid uh, branch of psychiatry. It's called behavioral psych uh, psychology. Um, which is uh, scientifically valid, but because it's scientifically valid, it can say very little about the human condition. That's the thing. <laughs> if you want to be rigorous, you can say less. Yeah. The idea of learned helplessness, for example, comes out of behavioral psychology, and it's been replicated many times. It's, it's very true. Um, but most of the findings of psychology and other branches of psychiatry, we're finding that they have... Um, they have very little scientific basis. There's, if you, you can Google crisis of replication in psychology, and you'll find that uh, roughly a third of psychological studies replicate. Mm. So that's less than flipping a coin onto whether it's true or not. Mm. So most of what we call psychology is completely made up and we shouldn't respect it as a professional discipline because of that. Well, I don't know if we're going to, I don't know if we're going to uh, be able to do that, Jeff, to be, <laughs> to be honest, I think it's we have to kind of, yeah, I mean, we have to, we probably have to start with, some, I mean, the, the, we got to start somewhere, right, with this, in pushing back on this trans, it, it's, at least on this trans issue. And then I would yeah, like I to also. A, it's an easy one, Kim, to, uh, even in California, where you're at, like, uh, I've seen a lot of very good polling on this issue. The majority of Californians don't believe in doing this to children. The major majority yeah. of gay people don't want to do this to children. It's actually a small group of social elites in, in uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles that want to do this. I think there's real hope in California for a proposition to bypass the legislature and get a bill to the governor that it would be very unpopular if he didn't sign protecting yeah. children from these procedures. Um, a lot of uh, people in your audience may not know that California has this wonderful thing where you can do plebiscites and you can take a popular vote to bypass the legislature. I would like to amend the Texas Constitution to also allow propositions like California has. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, some other small things you can do is simply outlaw school psychologists, outlaw schools and school psychologists from withholding this from from information from parents. You know, California recently passed a law that allows schools to do that. Um, other states should pass laws outlawing it. Uh, California passed a 
transgender kidnapping bill is how I would characterize it. Um, if a child uh, who has been diagnosed with gender dysphoria enters the territory of California and is going to be returned to a state that does not do gender affirming care, California uh, is prohibited from allowing that or assisting that. So even if there's a court order to bring the child back to that state, California is not allowed to do that. Um, I think states uh, should follow suit in places like Texas and states that are against this and become uh, sanctuary states for children. That children, uh, we will not repatriate children to states that do uh, chemical castration of children, even if a court orders it in that state. I think we need to start uh, essentially doing the opposite of what California is doing. What a sick world we're living in, Jeff. I just, you know, it's, right. um, look, I'm all for, if you're an adult and you want to live your life the way you want to live your life, I have transgendered right. friends and I'm fine right. with that. You know, I, I don't have any, uh, and I'm not cruel to them. You know, if they want to, if they, I'll call them she or he or whatever, you know, I don't have any personal issue with that. I don't like being forced into having to do some pronoun for somebody because the government's right. telling me and, and hindering my free speech. I'll do it out of kindness because this is what my friend wants and I, I love my friend. And so of course I'll do that for my friend. But the but we, we do have to, for one, we have to draw a couple of lines. And that first line is even my friends who are trans, they still know that they're actually male or actually female. They're not, you know, they're not, Del delusional and they yes. you know they're maybe a little delusional because they you know they think they're the other gender but they're not they don't really think that you know they know yes they just like to be a, you know they, mm -hmm. they feel differently so they want to express that and so that's totally fine but we've got to i we have to push back on this whole idea that oh your gender is created later you know you could decide that is just not true we have two gen there's it's boys and girls that's it yes that's there are right. some scientific you know there are some anomalies or some mutations that are out there but there's but that's you know it's just it's gotten insane and out of hand and uh and we have to i i agree with you now we have to we definitely have to pass laws to prevent children from being hindered harmed have their puberty puberty is a human right and we have to yes. The ability to maintain your reproductive organs is a human right, and we have to protect yes. that for these children. This is and just, you think this outrageous. would be so easy to do? You know, I I think it's, it's the most morally sense. obvious question since slavery, honestly. And yeah, you get a lot of pushback even among Republicans because these big donors are totally against it. Well, and I, you and know, I have a libertarian, I have a libertarian streak streak in me, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of libertarians yeah. have the viewpoint of no i don't want the government to go in and regulate which was yes. very much my view before i personally thought it was wrong to transition kids i would never mm -hmm. do it if my siblings came to me and said they wanted to start right. transitioning one of my nieces or nephews i would definitely fight them on that yes. i would be screaming at them <laughs> telling them mm -hmm. it's a terrible idea but i right. still wanted to keep it legal you know but the, but making it illegal was something i wasn't really comfortable with having that libertarian streak but now i see that this must be made illegal. This is a crime to commit this on these children. It's a crime. It, it permanently infringes on a child's liberty when they become an adult. Yeah, yeah. And that, that is the very thing pr uh, parents are supposed to protect. The, the exercise of free will and liberty when a child grows up, as a libertarian and an ANCAP, that would be the most important thing you could impart to your children. Let, right. to, to, to bring them to a position as an adult where they can make their own decisions in their own situations. And that's about, to me, about as libertarian as it gets. Yeah, you're right. That's the job of a parent is to, is to health, you know, you, you want them to be healthy and get them to that point of adulthood where they then have maximum freedom and choice. And right. you, if you take that away by doing these crazy procedures on them, uh yeah i mean thank you for changing my mind on this and uh, now you know it's you've great. done it's, it for me this is a, well, this has been such a wonderful conversation I, I this is the best interview i've ever done oh jeff thank you so much and thank you for being here and i yeah. i i now feel uh I, not only have you changed my mind but i feel very strongly about this i you know i'm i'm thinking about i'm gonna go to my government and start start doing something start because this is just 
this is insane and we can't go down these insane paths. And I, right. I'm so sorry that you're going through this and not just uh, really, you, I'm sorry for your son. I'm so sorry yes. that your son is having this harm done to him. And he's a good um, boy. I just want to tell you, he is a very good hearted boy who, when he grows up is going to be a gift to America. He's a good hearted young man who uh, he's, he's generous. Uh, he's he's uh, very focused on the needs of other people and helping other people and particularly people that, that need extra help. He's the kid that, you know, if there's a kid alone in the playground, he won't let the other kids play if they don't include him. You know, mm -hmm. he's a good boy and he deserves a chance at a normal life. And you're still fighting. So even though you haven't seen your sons in three years, you're still fighting her in the courts. To Never going to stop fighting from... for my son. Yeah, he deserves everything I have and he's going to get it. Jeff, I wish you the absolute best. How can people help? Is there any way for people to help? You know, uh, the main thing, I, I, I don't ask people to donate or anything. You know, I, I think it's more important that in your local communities, you try to protect kids where you are. If you're in a state that doesn't have laws against this, try to get laws to at least protect children from, you know, chemical castration. Um, if if you're if you're in, in, if you're the kind of person who's more into local, you know, in your county, you know, get get your school district to pass policies to not keep this information from parents. I would it would help me more if you would save your own kids. You know, I always say, save James, save thousands of children, so I never forget the other children that are at risk. It's gonna take all of us to, to fight this uh, huge lobby that's for this. So get, get involved in your state and your, in your local community. That's the most important thing you can do. If, you're, if you want more information on this, you can always go to uh, the Save James page on Facebook which mm -hmm. um, is run by a network of volunteers who follow this issue worldwide. Um, and they're very dedicated uh, to children and, and direct uh, people who need help to lawyers and other resources. Um, you can find me on X at, at Jeff Younger Show. I don't actually have a show. I, my public life had become like the Truman Show. So it was kind of a joke, you know, like my life is so uh. public now. Or you can find me on Substack at jeffyounger.substack.com and I write on transgender issues. Um, I write on intellectual history, uh, mathematics, a lot of things there. Well, we have those links down below to your X and to Substack and we will put that link down there for the Save James Facebook page. Um, definitely write your book, get your book out there. So many parents okay. are concerned about this, wondering about this. They need that information. Everything that you've been researching, people need that. People are gonna need help because uh, yeah, this is this is a crazy situation and it's, it's a crazy getting situation. worse. And it's getting worse. Yeah. So Jeff, thank you again for being here. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Best of luck. Hey guys, this was just a clip of a longer show. Catch the full show by going to kimiversonshow.com. It is free. It airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. You could go back now and watch this full interview. I highly recommend it. Again, go to kimiversonshow.com. Thank you so much for watching.